Hi, Jeff Cote here with another session of Boating Tech Talk. All right, welcome everyone and thanks for joining me. We've got a question from Trevor and Trevor's asking us some questions about uh, installing a battery isolator. So Trevor asks, Jeff, I just purchased a battery isolator, but I'm a bit confused. Hey, welcome to the club, they're not easy, okay? Where to run the starting more wire? I agree with your comment about having too many wires on a battery. That's a side note, by the way, but yes, it's one of my pet peeves to have too many wires connected to a battery. I think it looks sloppy. I agree, Trevor. I also think it looks sloppy. All right. Do I run a gauge two wire from the battery switch and then to the starter and then with a bus bar in between with the isolator? Okay. Do I even need a battery switch anymore? So Trevor's obviously confused. And he's sort of, at this point, looking for clarification, and we all are, to be honest. It wasn't easy. I remember starting this 15 years ago. All of this didn't make sense. So the first thing to think about is that when you're actually uh, talking about a battery isolator, you're actually not talking about a starter. Battery isolators actually don't deal with starters, not if you do it properly. So your starter should be connected pretty straightforward. Now, where it gets complicated, where the alternators normally come into play is that in 99.999% of all our boats, the alternator is connected to the starter solenoid, okay? And that's the issue. That's why starters and alternators are linked together because of this daisy chain. And this happens in our cars. This is happening in all our boats. This is how a standard boat is generally wired. The starter, is connect starter solenoid is connected to the alternator positive post. When you install a battery isolator, and I'm going to show you a diagram here, when you install a battery isolator, what you're doing is you're actually, instead of having the battery, the alternator connected to the starter solenoid, you're actually rerouting the wire, and now you're running it to a new device. All right, so here we go. We've got uh, right here um, the alternator right here in the picture, right? So that's your alternator. And here I'm circling right there, we've got the battery isolator. And notice how the alternator now is directly receiving output from the alternator. Notice the arrow, right? I've got even a directional arrow here. And then that battery isolator in turn is connected to each respective battery. So it's really important that battery isolators are connected to batteries to their what's called the unswitch positive distribution, which means it needs to be connected directly to the battery and there can be no switch in that line. So it has to be always connected to the battery. Even when you turn the battery switch off, the battery isolator is still connected to the battery. And so what you see is on those diagrams, I even have the direction arrow, right? It's showing basically that you've got current going from the battery isolator, going to both house and engine. Now, you should always, always, and it's worth repeating, have the starter be connected to an engine on off switch or source selector and the battery. And then what you're doing is you're rerouting the alternator directly to a battery isolator. And then notice another thing that's worth noting, Trevor, is notice how I've got little fuses and I'm circling them here. And I've got a fuse here, and then I have a fuse here. And so you always have fuses on the connections to batteries. All batteries have to have a fuse, okay? So all connections to batteries have to be fused, and that's why I'm showing here. Generally, we here at PYS will use actually what are called marine rated battery fuses, MRBF. Uh, Blue Seas uh, makes two models um, that are great. I think it's the 2151 and the 5191, believe it or not. Um, and they're awesome. They're easy to install. They're not too big. It's not hard. Um, so those are sort of my favorite fuses for those applications. And remember, Trevor, the starter still needs to be connected to a battery switch, to an engine battery, and now your battery isolator is going to be taking a completely different path directly from alternator, right? Right here, alternator to battery isolator, and then battery isolator out to the batteries. And that's basically how a battery isolator works. And if it's confusing, it's normal. It's a battery isolator. It's not easy. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching this PYS video. If you've got further questions, please ask them below or send us an email via the contact forms on our website. Happy to donate my time to share information with you. You can support us in keeping this channel ad-free by purchasing some merchandise on our store or by making a donation on PayPal. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching.